Crises of the Spirit help goodness in us gain control over evil and truth gain control over falsity. So right, what should be in charge gets to be in charge through this. They help reinforce truths and join them to goodness and at the same time shatter evils and falsities that arise from them. Not too bad of a list. They also serve to open our inner spiritual self and bring our earthly self under its control, break up our love for ourselves and for the world, and tame the cravings that arise from them. Once this has been done, we come into enlightenment and gain a perception of what is true and what is good and of what is false and what is evil. This gives us intelligence and wisdom, which then keep growing day by day, much like the new person that's born grows day by day. During our spiritual crises, the Lord alone is fighting for us. If we do not believe that the Lord alone is fighting for us and winning for us, then we are experiencing only an outer crisis that does not do us much good. So it's it's as much about how we understand what we're going through as what we actually go through to to get that this is a process that, that God is doing for us on our behalf rather than just, oh, well, I got through that on my own. Because once we understand what the 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 extent of what God is doing for us, that that is the truth that liberates us because we get our relationship to our source and that is the foundation of the state of mind which is heaven and as we're going through all of this stuff it's actually common to reach a point of despair the swedenborg says in nj196 we call a crisis spiritual when the truths that belong to religious faith are under attack within us truths that we believe at heart and love truths that we believe at heart and love to live by This is especially so when the attack threatens the good things we do from love, the goodness in which we find our spiritual life. All this is done by the evil spirits who are with us, and as it is being done, it seems to us that we are suffering inner anxieties and pangs of conscience, because what is being done shakes and tortures our spiritual life. These crises are most severe when they are accompanied by pains experienced in our physical bodies, or in our bodies meaning physical bodies, and are even worse if the pain persists and becomes more severe and we beg for divine mercy, but there is still no deliverance. So it's not always anxiety. There can actually be a physical component to it as well. This leads to despair, which is the end of the process. So actually, despair is not, ooh, we've taken a wrong turn. This is part of it. And there's actually a physical analog to all this in the labor and delivery process. So Swedenborg writes about spiritual crises that it's not that we just go through them once, but that we have to have many of them through the course of our whole regeneration, the process of our regeneration. And this is another aspect of what he says about regeneration that lines up perfectly with pregnancy. Um, Because as we all know, to get a pregnancy to completion, um, a woman starts going through contractions, which eventually leads to the birth of her baby. And... um, It's interesting, so those contractions on their own totally paint this picture of how uh, each one can be seen as a spiritual crisis that is leading to that, you know, uh, separation of evil and falsity and joining love to truth in us. Um, And in labor, there are actually three different phases that happen. First is early labor, when the contractions might be far apart and um, pretty you know, moderate, not really very intense at all. And then you have active labor, and that's when the contractions are closer together and they're stronger and more intense. Um, And so it's interesting, just like how, if you notice a phase of a spiritual crisis for yourself, often it feels like things get worse before they get better. Because then labor goes through ultimately to the third phase of labor, which is transition. And this really lines up well with what Swedenborg says about that final point of despair that you, that we have to come to in a spiritual crisis. And no matter how much we hate it, you have to go through it. And that is entirely true about that third phase of labor that is called transition, um, which just means you're transitioning from labor into actual delivery mode. Um, but there are some classic sort of psychological and emotional aspects to transition that line up a lot like a spiritual crisis. I've had three kids and you get to a point when it just feels like you can't do it anymore. And yet clearly your body can, it's your mind that thinks you can't do it anymore. Um, And you classically, women can get to a point where they feel like they can't go on. They might call for, you know, anesthesia at that point um, because things are getting so intense. 
And yet for a person, for the midwife or a support person or a doula, when a woman gets to that phase, she's feeling like, I'm giving up, I can't do this anymore. And yet that's actually a very, sing a very promising point because it means she's right, really close to the end of the process. It means her body is getting right ready to, to bring this baby into the world. And so it's an interesting counterintuitive thing that when you, and yet it lines up so perfectly with our spiritual life, that when you feel like you can't go on, you are actually really close to the end. And there's something about that quality of despair that part of, part of with contractions and in labor is that you can have a lot of resistance to what's happening. And I think that's true with our uh, temptations, our spiritual crises, but with, um, when you reach that point of despair, there's there's some kind of a surrendering or a just a, a letting go and even a softening to the process that then actually lets your body open up and bring you to the next phase, which is bringing your beautiful baby into the world or the Lord bringing you into this new phase of love being rooted deep in your heart.